As some of you may know, in a previous lifetime, I worked in the private equity industry, doing merger and acquisition due diligence on different companies. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, a merger is a joining of two companies. Before Brett bent the knee, I took it upon myself to do an analysis on the potential merger between Brett and Patricia. Tonight, I share my results with you. Now, some of you might be wondering, what makes you an expert on Brett Chung? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Brett and I have been best friends since before I can remember. However, the earliest documentation points to 1990. <laughs> Together with two of the other groomsmen, Kevin Fang and Terry Lee, our childhood was blessed with a friendship built on the pillars of innocence and imagination. Together, we would play real-life adventures where we would save the galaxy from evil villains. We would play roller coaster by riding down my basement in a cardboard box. And we would build impregnable fortresses out of pillows and mattresses. It was the best of times and the future looked bright for us. <laughs> Fast forward to our teenage years, and that childhood imagination was nowhere to be found. On the chart on the left-hand side here, you will see our creativity over time. Things were looking bright, but it all came crashing down in 1996 when the N64 was released. Outside of all the extracurricular activities that our parents made us do together, our free time was dominated by multiplayer action on the N64. To this day, I still believe that our inner circle was kept to four people because the N64 only had four controllers. <laughs> and no one wanted to wait their turn to play Mario Kart. Fast forward another decade, and we're at the stage where we are today, adulthood. Despite the fact that Brett and I went to schools in different cities, worked and lived in different cities, we still found a way to stay incredibly close. Um, whether it was vacations back at home in Maryland, trips to different cities around the world, volunteering at camp, going to music concerts together, or having our bro reunions, <laughs> we always found time to stay close. One thing that I'm eternally grateful for, though, is that no matter where si which city we ended up in, we always found a way to find an amazing group of friends that we ultimately were able to bring together. And that is evidenced by the fact that Brett and I have 624 <laughs> mutual friends together on Facebook. It's actually at least 625 today. But now I get into the fun stuff, which is the deep dive on Brett Chung. On this slide here, I have a chart of Brett's valuation over time, or what I like to call the husband index. Now, Brett comes from a good family and he grew up in a nice town, Potomac, so he IPO'd pretty strongly in 1985. <laughs> that continued to grow, and we had a spike here in 1989 when he meets Kevin Fang, the most guai and well-behaved person I've ever met. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was corrected the following year when he met me, me and Terry. <laughs> Sorry, Terry. The 90s were good for Brett. He continued to excel in school, rack up extracurricular activities, he had some nice internships, and then he matriculated into Columbia University, so we have this nice jump up here. Shortly after, though, he met the Lamb Twins. <laughs> Despite meeting the Lamb Twins, Brett would still graduate from Columbia. And we, we saw his uh, husband and ex grow as he got his first job, he grew professionally. Uh, we saw a little hiccup in 2011 when he would meet his future MVP at his bachelor party, Brian Che, all day, AKA the savant. Fortunately for Brett though, he would get into Wharton the next year and we would see his man value rise from there. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Why is Brett's valuation so high, and how do I short this? Now, 
before you do that, I would like to remind you that Brett is the modern day renaissance man. Besides for being really smart and well-educated, we all know that Brett is really good looking. After all, he is runner up, Mr. Taiwan. On the left-hand side here, we take a look at Brett's trophy collection. 41 trophies, I counted. I did some research and I found that the average American accrues about 8.2 trophies across their childhood. What that tells us is that Brett is 5.1 times better than winning than the average American. Now, besides for being really good at sports, Brett can dance. He's a talented musician. He can play piano, he can sing, he can play guitar, and I heard he works a mean woodwind too. Cause, cause, cause he took a lot of clarinet lessons as kids. And on top of all of that, he's cultured to boot. I, I know it's pretty hard to believe this is all one person. Now, despite the fact that Brett is runner-up Mr. Taiwan and a Renaissance man and has all these great attributes and abilities, the real reason behind his high valuation is his core values. Brett is unconditionally loyal and selfless to the people that he cares about. There were a lot of case studies I want to share here, and actually most of them I had to cut out. This one's not even that tight. Uh, but the anecdote is one that's personal to me because it was a story of when Brett was there for me when I was down. So about five years ago, things didn't work out with me and this girl I was dating in Los Angeles. And Brett, you know, worried about me and my emotional well-being, rallied a group of my closest friends. And that same weekend, the week that I broke up with this girl, surprised me in Los Angeles and turned what would have been a bad weekend into one of the best weekends of my life. So thank you, Brett. Yay. Now, no one is perfect, obviously, and there's always opportunities for improvement. <laughs> for those of you who don't know what FOMO means, it's a fear of missing out. Ever since Brett was a kid, he's exhibited significant symptoms of FOMO. <laughs> Whether his friends were going out and having fun or getting into trouble, Brett always wanted to be a part of that. Fortunately, as Brett's got older, you know, we've seemed to see some of those symptoms dissipate but really what I think is that the FOMO has transformed. Now, Brett fears missing out on time with Patricia. Brett also plays hard to get. <laughs> now, not unlike his Shiba Inu Armin, you're not always that sure if Brett's really that fond of you or not. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? I might be speaking for myself here, but I have spent more time and energy trying to win Brett's love and affection than I have on any girl in this world. It's probably why I'm best man here, but also why I might be single. But I digress. Now, before I go into my final piece, my conclusions, I'd like to remind you guys that a merger is the joining of two companies. Typically in a merger, it is between two companies of equal or comparable value or stature. This deal looks more like an acquisition. Look at this guy begging on his knees. It is obvious who the boss is here. <laughs> now, I knew Patricia was special from the first time I heard about her from Brett. It might have been the way he was talking about her, the tone of his voice, or it was when he said, quote, Yo, Chen, I think I'm done. <laughs> That was how I knew he was serious. 
So serious, in fact, that after only a few months of them dating, I made a bet with someone in this room that they would go the distance. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but a few hours ago, they just said I do. <laughs> so, if you want to remain anonymous, I expect a Venmo before the end of this presentation. <laughs> A very quick due diligence into Patricia, and it is obvious that she is a dominant player in the market. I used a stacked bar chart here on the left-hand side because Patricia is stacked. If graduating from Stanford is a stack, then Patricia has stacks on stacks. <laughs> Patricia, though, really is the full package. She's smart, she's beautiful, she's kind, she's funny, and she's cunning to boot. <laughs> Patricia, you know I know this because we played Werewolf that one time. It was her first time. Uh, and I'm good at that game. But Patricia took me to the wood chipper. <laughs> Brett. Never lie to this girl. <laughs> the key takeaway, though, from this presentation is this, though. That the com combined entity is greater than the sum of its parts. On the left-hand slide here, you can see the newly formed entity, which I will call Ho & Co. <laughs> reaps significant synergies from the union between Brett and Patricia. With their powers combined, I know that the forecast is extremely bright and full of happiness. No matter how I model this out, I show Ho & Co growing in happiness as your love continues to evolve and as you eventually expand the Ho & Co family. Oh, Bratty Boo. <laughs> Remember the time you slept over at my house and we stayed up really late talking about how difficult it would be for us to find a suitable match because of how picky we were? <laughs> well, Brett, you did it. Finally, you found something perfect and finally, you have found yourself. I could not be happier for the love that you have with Patricia. And I could not be prouder of the man that you have grown into today. I would like to end this presentation with one of the things I like to do most in this world, which is making people drink. <laughs> it's also one of the things I'm best at. So grab your glasses and join me. First, I would like to raise a toast to Mr. and Mrs. Chung. Thank you for bringing Brett into this world, and thank you for always being a second set of loving parents to me. I know Mr. Chung could not be here with us today, but I know that he's here with us in spirit, and I know that he's happier and more proud than anyone else in this room. Cheers to you both. Cheers. Oh, so I got a couple more, or maybe a few more. Secondly, I would like to raise a toast to the family and friends of the bride. I may not know you well yet, but I know that Patricia is an amazing woman. And I know that you guys had a lot to do with that. So cheers to you guys. Two more. <laughs> Brett, I want to take the opportunity to thank you for your unwavering friendship throughout all of these years. It is without a doubt one of life's greatest blessings to me, and I would not be the man I am today if I had never met you. It is my greatest honor to be here today as your best man. Cheers to you. And lastly, to the bride and the groom, 
Never forget that you guys were meant for each other. Charts and graphs aside, I know that you guys are going to have an amazing life together. I look forward to sharing that future with you guys. Cheers to you both. Cheers! Gambe, 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 gambe.